water. It was just rushing on. Immediately called 911. And the rescue team came just in time. I knew that God could save me. We've seen at least 21 tornado warnings. It's the benefit of having the dual pole radar. You can see the debris after a tornado has touched down. We've seen tragedy here, lives lost. This school got obliterated. It started rattling. We have been on the air with you since 2 a.m. And this is why the rainfall projection that we were talking about pretty much came to fruition. Your safety is our priority and the threat for severe weather continues. Now at six, we hear from a family who lost a loved one in a deadly home collapse from Tropical Storm Debbie. A community trying to come together after the storm ripped the roof off a school. And video shows children rescued from fast moving water in Wake County. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Deborah Morgan. And I'm Gerald Owens. We have seen pop-up tornadoes knocking down trees and knocking out power to go along with massive flooding across the area. This is the newest information at 6 o'clock. We've had 24 tornado warnings today. Five of them have been confirmed. Debbie, now a tropical depression, is causing several problems across North Carolina, including power outages, 73,874 right now. People are in the dark, according to Ready NC. We have live team coverage. WRL's Dan Haggerty and multiple crews are covering this storm and the damage Debbie has left behind. We begin with meteorologist Mike Mays in the WRL Severe Weather Center. Mike, what's the latest on the storm and our threat? The storm, Debbie's located near Charlotte right now. It is moving to the north at about 10 miles per hour. We still have rain bands coming through. We still have the threat for an isolated weak brief tornado as we get through the 8 o'clock hour. Franklin County, here's Lewisburg. Boy, you guys have been hit hard. Three tornadoes, three confirmed tornadoes, one this morning, two this afternoon. A Rocky Ford, Ingleside community, and near Margaret, just to the west of Lake Royale, had a brief tornado touchdown as well. Uh, there was... Uh, Franklinton, or also Franklin County, uh, Lake Gaston, looking at the ominous clouds, and over North Hills, you can see those ominous clouds as well, and enough sunshine coming through where we got up into the 80s this afternoon. So we still have that tornado watch in effect roughly from Raleigh north and east towards southern Virginia till 8 o'clock. The good news is the rain bands don't look quite as menacing as they were a short time ago. We are still seeing some tornado warnings up to the north across parts of uh, Rockingham County. Uh, there's the rain band stretching from Johnston County south toward Columbus County, rotating up to the north, but the atmosphere is still conducive in this region here to perhaps develop an isolated weak brief tornado through about 8 o'clock. Uh, once we get past that point, we'll see if the uh, National Weather Service or the Storm Prediction Center extends the watch. I doubt that will be the case. And farther south, we see occasional showers moving through. One band we're watching here is in Johnston County, Archer Lodge, Emit community moving through Selma, Princeton. That'll eventually make its way toward Bailey and also Spring Hope over the next hour or so. There's still flash flood warning in effect till 8 o'clock for Person County, Granville County, Vance County, Mecklenburg County, Halifax County, and Southern Virginia. Still the possibility of some flooding. And here's what's going on with Debbie right now. It is a tropical depression 45 miles east of Charlotte. Top winds are at 35, moving north and northwest at about 10. Forecast track in intensities tomorrow morning at 2 a.m., 35 mile per hour winds, and then takes off like a shot. We were talking yesterday about a cold front coming along that will give it the kick to move out of the area. And the flooding threat for tomorrow low to medium. We have showers possible in the morning and with that front that's going to come into the area that's kicking the storm out will stall over us. So tomorrow afternoon there could be a few showers and storms over the weekend as well. And since the ground is so saturated, we've had four, five, six, seven inches of rainfall. Any additional rain across the area will likely cause some flooding issues, flood advisories, so flash flood warnings. Question is, how bad is it going to be up north? If you have plans to fly up toward Philadelphia, New York, could be a slow go tomorrow, so check with your airline. I have more about what's expected for the weekend with the seven-day forecast coming up in less than 15 minutes. All right, Mike, thank you. Year-round schools have already started in several communities, and we've heard from a handful of them so far about their plans for tomorrow. You can always find an updated list of the closings and delays in your area on WRAL.com. We've seen some of the worst damage today in Wilson County. Yeah, that community was hit so hard. WRL's Dan Haggerty leads our live team coverage from Springfield Middle School. Dan, luckily the tornado hit so early in the morning that no one was in or around the school. 
People uh, here are going through a lot, Deb. There was a man killed in this storm. A number of homes were damaged. And, of course, we have the extensive damage to the middle school place that so many families were counting on attending the new school year in just a couple of weeks. Drone 5 gives you a vantage point over top of this building. You can see the extent of the damage, the roof that was torn up. You can see portions of that building that appear destroyed. The video from the ground is uh, just as discouraging. As you take a look inside the building, you can see that it's not just the exterior that's been damaged, but, but inside as well, pretty deep into the structure. Time and time again, when we cover natural disasters like this, you hear the adage that property can be replaced, but lives cannot. Unfortunately, this community was not spared from that tragedy. A man was killed in this storm overnight. WRL's Kristen Severance has been in that community today, talking to neighbors and learning more about who this man was. Kristen. You know, Dan, family members tell me that 60-year-old Brian Barnes lived in this home his entire life until a tornado came through and destroyed the home and sadly took that man's life. We keep seeing remnants of Brian Barnes' life out here. We've seen three cats so far come out of the rubble. And, you know, family and friends, they are just in shock that this happened early this morning. Family members of Brian Barnes had to come and see what was left of his home for themselves. Sister Pam Berger heard the tornado warnings and texted her brother right away. And I texted him at 315, you know, you okay? And I never heard anything from him. His home on Lloyd Street in Lukama has a basement. Hey, we were there as neighbors came and searched the area, calling his name, hoping that maybe he made it down there. Fire officials said he died when the tornado hit. He was pulled from the first floor bedroom. But he wasn't a hard guy to get along with. It's like I told the rest of them this morning. This is like a small town that Jason Aldean's on. You mess with one, you mess with all of us right here in this neck of the woods right here. So how do you feel knowing like he's he's gone? It's going it's going to take a while to set in cuz it's hard to believe. Pam describes the last time she talked to her brother. What what can you tell us about Brian? He was fun, he was generous. I don't know what to say. I just start crying. Helpful. Came to my house last night. I was going to come over this morning and put a garbage disposal in. Said I'll call you in the morning. Then this happened. Yeah, you know, it, it's just so sad. And Pam was out here, you know, with other friends looking through the home, trying to see what they could salvage. And on her way out, uh, she had something, she was holding something, and I, and I asked her what it was, and she had found a, a record. It, it was in perfect condition. It was the Almond Brothers record, and she said she's going to keep it, maybe give it to uh, some of his family members. It, friends, neighbors kept stopping by all day because they were very close with Brian. They said he would host all of the neighborhood block parties, and they truly just cannot believe this happened early here today. And Dan, I know that you've been talking to so many people as well. You just feel like people are still in shock. Certainly. Kristen, thank you so much. And our hearts, obviously, with his family and neighbors as well. And nothing compares to the loss of life. But there are so many people in this community thinking about how their lives are going to progress over the next couple of weeks as school begins to start. And it's unclear if it will be at the middle school behind me. WRL's Chelsea Donovan has been covering that angle of the story today and joins us with what you've been able to learn. Yeah, by taking a look behind us, the future is really unknown for 475 students that call this school home. They're supposed to start uh, in just a couple of weeks in August. But as you can see with the damage, we just don't know what that looks like yet. Of course, we talked to a former principal of the school, as well as Governor Roy Cooper, who was boots on the ground getting a look inside today at the damage. 
From drone five, a gaping hole. A farther look inside, classrooms unrecognizable. Yellow insulation strewn about. It looked like an explosion. Governor Roy Cooper walking through the damage today. Springfield Middle, built in 2000, now battered and bruised. I know that that's the seventh grade wing that we can see here, and then where the truck is, the sixth grade wing. Um, and a lot of memories of, you know, good kids, good teachers um, in those wings that, you know, which is making it again tough to, to sit here and look at it. That's Marcus Spell, a former principal here, having a hard time looking at a place he spent years in. A lot of memories there. Spent about 17 years in that building. From Drone 5, you can see Tropical Storm Debbie placing a target on the 6th and 7th grade wings. But then you see the two other wings, 8th grade classrooms, virtually untouched. The county's already working on next steps, getting it inspected. But obviously they have a lot of work ahead in repairing the school. Neighbors that live across the street thankful that the school wasn't in session. They live feet away from the devastation. Of course, I thank God. Because it could have been, could have been me. Yeah. Could have been worse. 475 middle schoolers attend the rural school. They're supposed to enter these walls on August 26th, but right now that remains up in the air. Thank God the children were not there when this storm hit. What a devastating blow to this school. A strong message there from Governor Roy Cooper. You can imagine a tornado coming through here when school's in session. Just a blessing uh, that it, that was not the case. This is a school behind us, Dan, that was built 24 years ago, and we've seen portable generators and AC units and power crews getting to work uh, nearly just hours after the destruction, trying to put the pieces back together for some normalcy during the school year. And, of course, we'll keep people updated on the progress that they make. Chelsea, thank you so much. I do want to remind everybody, you know, we spoke to a county commissioner earlier today who mentioned some, some other tragedies that this community has gone through over just the past couple of weeks. It wasn't long ago that a lightning strike caused a historic sh uh, church down the road to burn to the ground. A few weeks before that, there was a tragic accident on the interstate that killed five people. A lot of the first responders who responded to that accident were responding to homes and issues due to this tornado today. So to say that these folks have gone through a tough run would be an understatement. Deb, Gerald. Yeah, it's amazing how so many people's lives lives can be affected so profoundly in such little time as mm -hmm. time enough for a tornado to touch down there. Dan, thank you very much. I want to tell you a little bit more about Governor Cooper and his visit there on the ground to the school. He spoke about what he saw inside the building. It looked like an explosion. Uh, the, the window was, was blown out. What was amazing to me were, you know, a, a strong brick structure how many different bricks were everywhere. I mean, it, it was, uh, an explosion is the best way to describe it because this tornado came up and, and, and directed itself all the way through this school. Uh, devastating damage, chairs everywhere, uh, insulation hanging from the ceiling, light bulbs hanging, uh, really devastating. Boy, the power of that tornado mm -hmm. in just such an instant. Yeah, meteorologist Mike Mays. Uh, Mike, at least they get a break from this severe weather for a while. Yeah, we're still seeing some rain bands coming through. None showing signs of any kind of imminent rotation. This is the only suspect one I'm keeping an eye on. We'll have a closer look at that with future casts coming up. And this is Brian Schrader in the WRL Newsroom, where we have been busy here tracking damage reports all day long. Coming up, I'll tell you what we're learning about power outages across the area. And then several children are safe tonight after crews had to rescue them from a rushing creek in Raleigh. They talked to WREL about the moment they knew they were in trouble.
Welcome back here to the WRL Live Center as we continue tracking Debbie, those gusty winds and saturated soil creating some problems with trees coming down, leading to a lot of power outages. Here's the latest data that I'm getting from poweroutage.us. About 71,000 customers across North Carolina without electricity right now. In Wake County, just over 2,000 customers. In Durham County, just over 1,900 customers. In the Triangle right now, the hardest hit county is Orange County, where we have more than 5,000 customers in the dark. Duke Energy says they are working to assess the outages and the causes of those outages. They don't have uh, assess or estimated times for restoration for many of those outages at this point, but there are some at least that they hope to get back online tonight. Boy, they are making good progress. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. First responders jumped into action in Raleigh to save several children right during the storm. This is video here of the water rescue as it was happening. WRL Sean Gallagher spoke with those children live on television. He has their story. These kids learn just how quickly mother nature can change. They say the water was a lot slower than it is right now, so they felt confident they could cross. But all of that changed in an instant when they were hanging onto a tree branch for their lives. We were um, taking like a bike ride through the forest. A bike ride. And then it just took a turn. That almost ended deadly. It wasn't that high pressure. Okay, got three children, all under the age of 12, in the middle of the creek, in uh, some very fast, swift moving water. After two of the kids got across safely, the creek surge took hold of the other three. We were fine one minute. We were all like joking and laughing. And then the next minute, Andrew comes sliding down. Right as I grabbed it, it, it just, I just started, the water just pulled me right away and the branch snapped them. I thought like Evelyn fell in because I couldn't see her. When I, when I was hanging on to that branch, I, I could feel the, the rocks and the wood and, and like the spiky things just going right onto my feet and it, it hurt. And I was shaking, I was, I was really cold and I was really scared. Evelyn's just eight years old. She and her friend Kelly clutched her brother while he was hanging onto a branch. It was very scary. I was, Evelyn was shaking a lot. Um, we were all scared. 12 year old Gavin called 911 and when RFD water rescue crews got here, they had the kids out of the water within five minutes. Man, third child safely in the boat. I love them so much. Evelyn, the youngest of the bunch, acting very mature through a terrifying situation. Uh, I was praying because I, I knew, I knew that he could, I knew that God could save me. Prayers for these families answered in the form of Raleigh's bravest. I have a lot of emotions. I'm very relieved. I'm very happy, and I'm just very grateful that everyone's safe and we had all of uh, these rescue members here to help us. RFD tells me they had three water rescues in a matter of 90 minutes, all involving kids under the age of 13. That's why they're urging parents to let their kids know they shouldn't get in the water during or after a storm because this was extremely close to becoming a tragedy. Sean Gallagher, WRAL News, Wake County. Well, you know, those kids have did what we probably did as kids. I know oh, I did yeah. the same yeah. thing after Rushing Creek. You see, it looks great. Sure. You're with your it's friends and you, yeah. you take risks. I was so glad that they're safe. Well, yeah. those water rescue crews just did such a fantastic job of getting they there did. so fast and making those kids feel protected mm -hmm. and yeah. safe. Way to go. So, Mike, what do we have to look forward to the rest of this evening? Uh, we're still watching some rain bands, and this environment still conducive for tornadoes. Uh, so moving into Franklin County now, moving into Nash County, moving into Wilson County, I'm going to keep my eye on that. But that's the only menacing area that I see right now. Uh, getting closer to that, it's over Archer Lodge and Emmett, uh, southwestern Nash County, western Wilson County. You guys have been under the gun. I know nerves are probably frayed from what's been going on all day and heavier rain bands to the north and west. There's a new tornado warning here in Rockingham County. I believe that's still 6 and that's the new one that just popped in for Caswell County. Those are moving away, so we're not concerned about that. Plenty of rainfall across the area. We see the red two and a half to four inches. We see the yellow four to six. So we did pretty good with our forecast with the rainfall. And our flood watch continues through the day tomorrow till nine o'clock, but it'll probably get uh, shortened. We'll wait and hear from the weather service to see if that would be the case. But any potential showers tonight and tomorrow could cause some flooding issues. 79 right now at RDU, the dew point 75, a very tropical steamy day. 79 in Durham, 72 at Roxborough, 79 right now in Fayetteville, 81 at Rocky Mount. So it is a depression now. Debbie will continue to move to the north. Here comes the front. It's that uh, upper level flow ahead of the front that will carry the storm to the northeast and bring the northeast the flooding rainfall during the day tomorrow. The major cities probably won't have a problem until very late in the day. So if you're planning on flying up there, I'm sure your airlines probably already contacted you about what is possibly going to happen. Now, 
This evening at 6 o'clock, we've got our rain bands coming on by. The depression will continue to lift to the north. By 9 o'clock, showers still possible. There's one little rain band at 2 a.m. Does not look all that menacing. The parameters to develop tornadoes will weaken overnight, so it probably won't be a huge issue, not like what we saw uh, this morning, but we'll be vigilant and watch what's going on. Anthony will be in early around 1230 to keep an eye on the radar overnight. 6 a.m., showers still moving through. Lunchtime could be rather quiet with still plenty of clouds. And then tomorrow afternoon with the front in the area, that could spawn a few showers and storms and they'll probably be with us through the weekend because the front will still be here. So check out your seven day forecast 85 tomorrow, 90 on Saturday, 30% chance for storm, 30% on Sunday, 30% on Monday and highs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week should remain in the 80s. Morning lows will dip into the seven, 60s, I should say, and that's an indication that some less humid air will be on the way. Today just felt like Florida, Deb, as you know, because you grew oh, up yeah. there too. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, some relief is on the way later next week. At least we have dry air, Mike, at least enough dry air so people can start cleaning up yep. uh, after what happened today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. As we go to break, let's show you this live picture of the power crew still very hard at work. This is in Wilson County. We're going to go back live to Dan Haggerty to bring us an update on what was the hardest hit area of our entire viewing area when we come back. Back now on WRAL for continuing coverage of Tropical Depression, Debbie. Brian Schrader is in the Live Center with more images of flooding from around the area. Brian? We're going to take you out to Glenwood Avenue near Creedmoor Road. This is a parking lot up against uh, Crabtree Creek that has come over its banks. The tow truck driver that you see right there, that tow truck tells us that he had to pull seven vehicles from the water here in this parking lot. You can see Crabtree Creek back there in the distance. Here's the good news. I want to take you to some uh, new data in from that stream gauge out there on Crabtree Creek near Glenwood Avenue, and you'll notice that it peaked earlier this afternoon, but it looks like that level has started to fall in the past couple of hours. All right, Brian, thank you. A programming note, we will continue WRL coverage of Tropical Depression, Debbie, at 6.30. You can find NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt on air at WRL.2. That's available over the air at 5.2 or Spectrum at 12.55. We'll be right back.